Welcome to the Fabulous 50s and Beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host with my wife, Janetta. We're going to be talking about the Purchase Area Mental Health and Aging Coalition 2013 conference. The best is yet to come. And this is an interesting conference. We've covered this conference for a lot of years. And it's one where you get a lot of information. And our, our guests today are going to be talking about the conference and the different things that go on. You stay tuned and we'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race. Keep your own pace. Keep moving and never stop. Just go. Go. Hey, go with what you got. Welcome back. Our guests today are Melanie Henson, Director of Business Development at Parkview Nursing and Rehab Center. And she is this year's committee chairman for the annual Mental Health and Aging Conference for Purchase Area Development. We like to commonly refer to that as PAD, but uh, <laughs> it's a whole lot easier when they do that. And Carrie Gottschalk, right? Singular. Gottschalk Singler. All right. Uh, I sometimes have trouble with names, but uh, We'll get it straight. If you don't mind, I'll just call you Carrie. That'd be fine. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, we were trying to decide what number of conferences this was, and no, none of us seem to know. We just know it's been around for a long time. And one of the reasons it's been around because it's a good conference. Oh, yeah. You know, and there's a lot that goes on, and there's a lot of good information. And as I was telling Melanie, one of the things that we're excited about is they're going to have one of they going to have a, a uh, breakout session on hoarding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, hoarding is becoming a big thing today, mm -hmm. a big topic of discussion. And so let's talk about, number one, let's do the who, what, when, where, and why. Sure. Okay. All right. So right at the beginning, what we do is we always provide an opening small breakfast for everybody as they're coming in. And then we have um, a, a speaker at the, in the morning. And this year's morning speaker is going to be Andrew Halford, who's an entertainer, and he actually does a lot of book reviews at the public library, and he's really, really entertaining from what I understand. And so I'm really excited to have him. And then after that, we'll have two breakout sessions, two, two blocks, and in each block, we'll have three different speakers to choose from. And Gretchen Roof did the hoarding class last year, and it was super popular, so we brought her back. She's going to be doing that for two sessions this year, at the 10 o'clock session and again at the 11 o'clock session, because everybody packs into that particular one. It's just really interesting to everybody. So, And then Shanna Poindexter, who is with Lord's Hospice and Home Health, she's going to discuss hospice and um, some of the things that hospice can do to help benefit people, you know, because they really play an important role. And then Angie Newton is with the H Group, and she is um, a guardianship representative, and a lot of people don't know about guardianships, and it's something that people are really curious about. So she's going to talk about guardianships particularly, and um, then at a and she's going to be at 10 o'clock also. Then we have Daniel Defer from the American Red Cross, and she's going to talk about staying independent during a disaster. And after the ice storm and all the other things that we've been seeing going on around the country, I think everybody's kind of curious, what can we do to make sure we're prepared for something like this? Uh, that, that's an important thing, is that they, people learn to be prepared. And I think preparedness is becoming more of a topic of discussion than it has been in the past, you know. And, and I guess one of the reasons is, in the past, most people were prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they had, they had some shelves with some food on it. Might not have had water, but mm -hmm. they had food, because they either canned it or they'd put up. People, people used to do their own, fix up their own food. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody canned and... Gardened. Right. Yeah. And so they were ready. And now then, uh, if you give people, you know, like fresh vegetables, some of them don't know what to do mm -hmm. with it. I know. It's a fast food society now. Yes, it <laughs> is. Which doesn't last long. Which, which is not a healthy society anyway. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Well, they say that the people who survived the depression the best were the farmers because they could mm -hmm. at least grow their own foods and have right. food and have chickens and maybe a milk cow or something like that. And right. if you have things like that, then you can barter with other people. Right. Who, who, they're more than because people have to have food. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. They have to have food. I just love. I think that's such an interesting topic. Anyway, totally interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Dr. Jody Jowes. She's going to talk about avoiding depression and staying upbeat. A lot of times, you know, I mean, seniors, non-seniors, people, that's just something people need to think about, you know. Sometimes, you know, there's some positive things we can do to help avoid that. I know this time of year when it's been kind of dark, I've talked to a lot of people who can't wait for the sunshine because it kind of is a dreary uh, time of year. They have the sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what is that, seasonal... <coughs> well, effective sundowners disorder. is one. Yeah, one seasonal name. affective disorder. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, sundowners. And I've never so. heard that term till my mother was uh, mm -hmm. early right. 90s. And mm -hmm. Sundowners is something that a lot of Alzheimer's patients get where they start becoming much more confused at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And that's an, kind of an Alzheimer's thing, which kind of leads into another one of our um, speakers at 1.30. Aileen French is going to come from the Alzheimer's Association to specifically talk about Alzheimer's and a lot of the issues that um, we need to watch for and how we can help those patients. And this is also not just for the, the people who have it, but they're also for the caregivers and the social workers and the nurses. I mean, we provide, you know, CEU credits um, for the nurses and the social workers too, so that it helps them, it benefits them as well. Right. And that's going to be one of the topics also. Um. Let's talk about also, you've got one, with Dr. King we talked about before we went on there. Uh, Dr. Dr. Christopher King is a neurologist. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is his topic going to be primarily? He's going to speak a lot about Lewy body disease, which is uh, a form of dementia that we're hearing a lot more about um, recently. Uh, it can affect um, younger folks. Uh, younger than you would think of experiencing dementia. And so he's going to demystify that a little bit for us and explain some of the symptoms that we might see. To look for. And right. Yeah. Right. Some things we can look for. It can tend to be a little more aggressive uh, as far as um, decline and also as far as behaviors. And so he's going to tell us uh, a lot more about that and maybe some ways to deal with it. Okay. That's good. That's good. Very good. And then uh, diabetes management. What I need to sit in. <laughs> I know. That's always a fun topic, especially if you're diabetic and you, they're going to tell you not to eat sugar. But she's going to tell us actually how to manage your diabetes so that it's not it's not a miserable subject, but it can be enjoyable to, you and, know. And, and people need to understand that it's not that miserable a subject. Right. I mean, I, I mean I've been diagnosed as type 2. Mm -hmm. My problem is I'm having to take a steroid right now, right. which plays havoc with can sugar. Can raise your blood mm -hmm. sugar. Right. Uh, if I can keep my uh, steroid down to a half mm -hmm. a tablet a day, I can pretty well control my sugar. Well, and it's good. not that difficult. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I love ice cream. Well, you can get okay. sugar-free ice cream. Right. That's, That's right. really good. It's all <laughs> and, about moderation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, but, uh, I, I, and I had never, diabetes was not in our family. Mm -hmm. So there was no history of it. And I never had that much, I did, never thought that I would have that kind of problem. But I guess age has something to do with it, too. Absolutely. I cannot believe how many people who are um, over 65 who actually have di diabetes. It's yeah. just one of those things. The pancreas wants to, you know, slow down wants as to we age. too, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but most of it, I guess, is type 2, isn't it? Usually, yeah. Almost always. Yeah. It's almost type always. Two. And, of course, they say if I'd give them more exercise, that would probably help, too. All right. Well, then he did lose... Uh, 50 pounds at one time. Well, and I lost 50 pounds and then uh, when they put me on the steroid, mm -hmm. of course, it's th they call it the 15 or 20 pound. They do like to help you out a little few, a few <laughs> don't they? They do. Yeah. But, but I actually, my goal was to get back where I was right. when I graduated from high school and I did. 
Well, that's good. Yeah, I, I got there for a short period of time before I you went on the steroids. Fun. Yeah, then you yeah. get to have fun having a, a Yeah, it, it's kind of like that. the spare pants that I got on. <laughs> I don't know how old they are, but I outgrew them for years. And then finally, I felt I could get, get it back in them yeah, again. Yeah, I grow them again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that was, that was interesting. So thankfully, also. we didn't give them away. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and uh, we talked about Tracy Lawrence. Motivational speaker. Do you want to talk about her? This? Her topic is uh, called wholeness. And so she's going to focus on um, the physical aspects of wellness as well as spiritual, social. Uh, she has a an all-encompassing topic and it, it's really interesting. I've known Tracy for a long time in the fitness world, uh, but she also has a social work background and she is just wonderful. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing her talk about wholeness. Well, that's, wholeness is important. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what, that's what a lot of people don't realize, uh, that, that, it, that it's so important. Uh, let's talk about food since we talked about <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. We have been very fortunate this year that Texas Roadhouse has offered to provide the luncheon for us this year. So they're, they're doing that as a sponsor, and we really appreciate them doing that for us this you year. You know, I've noticed that Texas Roadhouse uh, is getting more community involved. Absolutely. Have they're you noticed wonderful. that? You know, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was there one night, and I'm telling you, it was so packed. People were calling in and they were still having to wait. I mean, it was it was a packed room, standing room only, waiting for a table. But anyway, so but they're providing the lunch, and I think that that alone can be a draw. You know, yeah. getting people yes, to come to right. the conference. And then you've got a jazz session in the morning. Um, no, that that is not going to happen. Not we're going to be playing big band music. You oh, know? Okay. And the whole theme is kind of you know the Frank Sinatra, um, the best is yet to come, top hat kind of. Funny, but we are going to do something really fun at, at lunchtime. We're going to have a mystery dinner theater, and it's going to be kind of a ballroom dancing theme, and there's going to be a whodunit, and uh, that's going to be really fun. Yes. Um, and right after that, we always, every year, we always do kind of a, some sort of exercise. We've done Zumba, a few different things. This year, we're just going to do some ballroom dancing. Mm. You know, a standalone, it, you don't have to have a partner, just ball and dancing steps because we always like to do a little movement after lunch. Wake everybody back up for the next session. Right, right. <laughs> yes, get the blood after, flowing after, after, after having sitting a good lunch. for several hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we come back, and just a minute, one of the things we do want to talk about is some of the sponsors oh, because yeah. you have a lot of sponsors, I know. Wonderful sponsors. And it, sponsors are important that the mm -hmm. program. And as a result of sponsors, I know. Uh, there are a lot of little giveaways that they have. Mm -hmm. I generally get all the pins and all the sticky notes <laughs> that I need for the year <laughs> when I go to the That's conference. That's always fun. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fun. But they, uh, and talking about diabetes, they give a lot of candy too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, he eats it. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, you know. But um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's probably one of the most informative uh, conferences that we have during the year in the area in its diversity of all the things that it covers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you know, I mean, we got other conferences that are single purpose type mm -hmm, conferences mm -hmm. that work. But we will be back in just a minute. And you stay tuned, because we'll be right back right after this announcement. Diseases will be cured here. A new form of energy will be discovered here. And here, the first flight to Mars will be launched. From inside this room, the latest social media craze will be created, as will the most downloaded song of all time. And in here, the next blockbuster 3D movie will be made because great futures start here. It's where the boys and girls clubs, in partnership with Microsoft and Comcast, are teaching kids computer skills in a program called Club Tech. It's just another way we're helping millions of students succeed today, tomorrow, and beyond.
Welcome back. We're talking today about the Purchase Area Mental Health Conference. It's coming on, and it's, we're excited about it. It's May the 22nd. It's going to be from 8 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m. at the Gospel Mission Worship Center. That's on, called Benton Road, but it's right off of I-95. That's exit 16. It's I-24. That's right off, yeah. I-24. Right, I'm back in Florida. I'm back in Florida. <laughs> Come back to Reedland. <laughs> right, right. Across from the Trader's Mall. Right, across right. from the Trader's Mall. Yeah. Right but, on 131. Um, yeah, we want to encourage you to attend this conference. Uh, you do need to register there. Talk about the fees and the, the scholars, whatever the, they are. It's $30. It's $35 for the okay. conference. Um, it's $10 for seniors. And we're hoping, we're crossing our fingers, that we might be able to get a scholarship this year. Generally, they have had them in the past, but we right. don't have the final. There have been a lot of different cutbacks, and so we're still waiting for the final. Yes, we get to give the scholarships. And so CEUs are available. CEUs are available. Yes, they and are. And that's, that's important for some of them that will be attending the conference that they get the CEUs. It's very important. But mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it's a good time, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I really hated that I had to miss last year. Uh, it's the first one I've missed in a lot of years. And uh, so we want to encourage you to put this on your calendar, May the 22nd, and it's at the uh, Gospel Mission Worship Center from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., starting out with uh, uh, refreshments in the morning at 8 o'clock while you register, and then Texas Roadhouse is doing the lunch, and that's got to be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. And so we want to encourage, and then they have another break in the afternoon mm -hmm. uh, that, for it to go on. So let's, let's again talk about this and some and some things. Uh, the title of the conference is? Um, the Best is Yet to Come. And uh, <coughs> it's, it's, it's each time there's going to be breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about some of the class topics again, who will be the speakers. Okay, um, we're going to have Gretchen Roof talk about um, hoard, when hoarding becomes a concern, because that's been a really popular subject. Uh, Shanna Poindexter from Lord's Hospice and Home Health is going to talk a little bit about um, hospice care and what hospice can do for people, because there's a lot more they can do people don't realize. And Angie Newton from the H Group is going to talk a little bit about guardianships. Let's talk, it may interrupt sure, just a minute, let's ahead. talk about hospice, because uh -huh. uh, I think the more people know about hospice, mm -hmm. uh, the more they understand what they do. Absolutely. There is, a, in my opinion, there is a big misconception about what hospice does. I think so too. Uh, we, we both have been hospice volunteers over the years, and uh, part of my job as a hospice volunteer was I would do Christmas. Mm -hmm. We would do Christmas 24-7, 365. Mm -hmm. If I'm there was a, a if wow. there was someone who was dying, wow. that's uh, awesome. we would we've done it as early as October the first, you mm -hmm. know, wow. and uh, uh, tremendous. If people just knew the heart of the workers, I mean, they they these people, they would prepare a Christmas dinner, they would bring a Christmas tree in, they would decorate it, they would put it up, and bring big bags presents. of Christmas presents wrapped. Wow, wrapped and everything, that's so neat. And, and then we would we would we would go and, and, and you take got the to presents in. And, and they had they have pictures, and this will be a memory right. that that they'll always have. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think the children even will. We had one case. We went to uh, mm. Hendersonville, Tennessee. Mm. First, it was a soldier that was dying. Oh. Yeah, we we work. I work with Campbell, Paul and, Campbell, uh, some too. Right. And. Uh, and he, he had, two, didn't he have two sets of two twins? Two sets of twins, oh, under goodness. six years, seven years old. Oh, my and, goodness. Uh, yeah. And he was so, dying. So um, we went and had Christmas with him, had a dinner. We went there like 10 days before Christmas. Yeah. And he, wow. But they said he'd be dead by Christmas. Mm. Yeah. That's so, so sad. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just that the services that are available. Mm -hmm. And then they have what they call Camp Robin. Are you familiar yeah. with Yeah. Yes. That's with wonderful. With the Camp Robin. And uh, we've, mm -hmm. we've been there for some of the camps. And uh, they're good. I, I, th this is not with what you're doing, but it's, it's with okay. hospice. It's we related. Were, yeah, we were, absolutely. Uh, one year I was there, and uh, I had a group that we were participating with. And so they go in for group time. Mm -hmm. And so I just go in with them, you know, and they tell the kids. They said, now y'all sit down on the floor, and we're going to have group time. Mm -hmm. So all the kids sit down, and one of the guys says, well, Santa, you go sit down there with us? 
<laughs> I'll never get up. But. I said, if somebody, will, somebody will have to help me get up. Oh. So we so we sat there, you know, and the eight different ones came share time, mm -hmm. and they shared why they were there and different things. So when they came by me, I just let them pass them by. Mm -hmm. Same kid. Well, Sano, what's your story? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had lost my brother younger you know, right. years, and so I used him mm -hmm. as my as my share time yeah. story. You right. Know. And uh, but. Um, they, they do a good work, you know, mm -hmm. especially, Absolutely. and with the kids, they do a good work. Yeah, I'll yeah. add a little bit to that. His brother, he was, uh, he's pastored churches, mm -hmm. and he did his brother's own funeral. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. hardest thing ever in my life. Oh, I, I bet. bet. Yeah, that I takes, mean, I took part wow. in my mother's funeral, but to do my brother's that whole was, funeral. Oh, boy, I can't imagine. Uh, but it, uh, it, it was, uh, it, that Camp Robin was always a lot of fun. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, they do the balloon releases and everything like that. But hospice just uh, uh, can be a great aid. Absolutely. One, you know, and one of the things that Shanna Poindexter told me, she's the one that's going to be speaking, she said, you know, one of the misconceptions is that, you know, they only can have six months of hospice. Mm -hmm. But she said that's not necessarily true. You know, she said, you know, they have to, you know, there's a lot more that goes into the decision-making process. And people don't realize that, that they can go in the hospice and out. Right. They can, yeah. That's true. And she, you know. Shanna, we were at a, an event together the other night, and Shanna was encouraging folks, as soon as you get that diagnosis, to go ahead and call mm -hmm. so that you can receive the hospice benefits. Mm -hmm. Right. As as long as you need to, and long, if there's a change, longer they can come is out, better. You know. That's right. absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah, and, and another thing too is they can they can be in a skilled nursing facility and still receive hospice. Receive, mm -hmm. receive hospice. So you know, and, and again, like I said, that's part of what one of our goals with this program is to let people know, mm -hmm. to inform them with good information mm -hmm. about what's available, and how they can take advantage of it. Right. Right. See, uh, in the years that we've done this, we have became or become educated ourselves mm -hmm. as to services that are available for people 50 and 55 right. and older. Right. Because there are a lot of services out there. You're right. And, and all of the facilities work together. We want to be a resource to our community. Uh, and we encourage folks to, to come visit with us and visit with the agencies, even if you don't have that need right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in that crisis situation, it's very overwhelming. Oh, yeah. And you don't know what to ask. So it's a lot easier to participate in events like this yeah, you need and to, to see what's out there to plan ahead. You need to get this up to before you get into the situation. Right. You need to know, well, where can I go? I can go back here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and over the last year, our website has been, and our blog has just Mm -hmm. It didn't crash, but you would thought that it had because I just couldn't keep it up. Right. But now we're beginning to be able to, to pump the information in mm -hmm. and put the links to the different organizations and the, and the different things that are going on. Uh, as soon as you can, uh, I can probably scan this and uh, put it up so they'll see sure. a schedule of, of what's going on mm -hmm. uh, on, on the website right. also. And, uh, and we, c we can do that. That's, we've done that in the past with mm -hmm. the different schedules and the things that are happening so okay. people know. Plus the fact it gives them the names of the people that are involved. Mm -hmm. If they want to get in touch with a particular organization, then the name of that person mm -hmm. is there so they can get in touch with them. But there's just, uh, there's, there is a lot of help out there that people just don't. And you hear people say, well, I can't get help here, I can't get help there. It's there, they just don't know where to go get it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing, even though there are specific speakers, there's also going to be lots of um, companies that have booths. You know, we were right. talking about that a minute. Right. And sometimes those people have a lot of information to share, too, even though they might not be a speaker on the schedule. That's right. They might have, like, someone from the pancreatic cancer group is going to be there to talk about that. You know, and she's not going to be speaking, but she's going to have a lot of information. Right. There. Informational booths. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of informational booths that right. will be there, too. Yeah, I, yeah no. there's quite a few. That, that will be very good. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, because, like you say, when it, you're, you know, you're whatever they are, you're, you know, your family, and mm -hmm. if they get down, then right. you get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that sometimes when there's somebody who's really ailing, that the caretaker sometimes is the one that suffers the worst in the end, and sometimes they might, you know, go first because they've oh. put so much effort in taking care of their loved one that they burn themselves completely out. They didn't right. take time to take care of themselves right. because right. they either didn't have the time or didn't make the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a re uh, in fact, we have a, uh, 
your conference is the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Yours is the 22nd. And then there is a caregiver's conference that's uh, coming up uh, in, in May also. May uh, 2nd. May, May 2nd. Wonderful. Yeah, and uh, so there are a lot of, and that will be a, a good conference because it mm -hmm. is for the caregiver. Right. Who's caring for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Great. good. Yeah, so, and again, that's one of the things that we're just trying to let the people know what's available out there in, in the different days. So if you will, uh, I think I can use some of this, but I can put it up on the, on the, on the site. Uh, the Fabulous Fifties, which you have there. Mm -hmm. And remember, if you want to find our site, it's thefabulousfifties.net. And uh, you, you can just uh, type it in and, and it'll bring you up. You can also see the shows there, the different programs that we have that are available also. Well, ladies, this has been exciting as to talk about this because I always enjoy this conference. You know, and I, I have too. I enjoy absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. As as committee members and some of us are sponsors, we always enjoy the classes as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, they're fun, and um, I had fun the year I spoke. I spoke to one of the breakout sessions, and it was it was fun too. What did you speak about? How to make everyday Christmas. Oh, that's good. That's a fun that's topic. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I tell people that uh, you determine how your days go to be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I start out with the example that if you're riding down the highway and somebody cuts you off and makes you so upset, you so bad, they don't even know you're upset. They've gone on down, down the road. They don't and care. They don't, they don't care. care. They don't even know. And then, then it just, you let it ruin your yeah, day. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, you, you control your thoughts. Mm -hmm. and, and you can do that and then we just use the different example. Right. And uh, we also talk about laughter being uh -huh. a, a, the healing effect of laughter. That's we've, amazing we've done a lot of too. research. We've done a lot of research on that and, and how that it works. In fact, we have friends that we recommend. We have certain movies that we recommend that they watch when they get down. That mm -hmm. is what I do. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm and I'm going to tell you, the two sister act movies are some of the greatest. <laughs> Those, Those are, are funny. Cute. And mm -hmm. of course, Patch Adams and uh, different ones like that. Mm -hmm. they're, they're movies that. Uh, and Daddy Daycare, that's another one. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> but, but well, there's lots and lots. There's, lots, there's sure. a lot of them out there. That, uh, and, and the research has shown they have actually put the diodes. I mean, they've, oh, they've yeah. tested people watching different movies and, and lets them know what it does to their face. Well, there are actual laughter certifications out there. Yes. And some uh, hospitals, trainings some that, hospitals that people have a can go to. Room. Right. Yeah. They you know that? Well, imagine the endorphins that, yep. you know, happen right. when, when you're laughing and having yeah. a good time. Well, they're it's telling me we're out of time. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Listen, it's been great having you all yeah, with us wonderful. today. We look forward to having you again. Thank you. And you stay tuned. We'll be back next week with another show. And you just pay attention to what we're doing and what's happening and take advantage of all these opportunities that we have. Remember, our site is thefabulous50s.net and use it or lose it. see as well as I used to, can't run as far or as fast, sometimes I think that the old me is becoming exactly that, but when I start thinking of all I don't have, that's when I tell poor me, Beethoven was 50 and deaf as a post when he wrote his ninth symphony, and he